Welcome to GC Cars, my name is Eric. And I'm Jesse. And this is the all new, all electric Ford F-150 Lightning. I'm super excited about this one, and I wanted to test it. So I'm very happy to have it. A little bit cold today. A little bit cold it's today. Raining. It's we raining. We already have lightning, but it's waiting for thunder. <laughs> Good one. Terrible. Nice one. Oh, also, comparison test. I didn't tell you about this. Comparison to what? We're comparing this, the F-150 Lightning, to the father of all electric trucks, the Tesla Cybertruck. F-150 wins by default <laughs> because after like seven years, that thing still because one doesn't exist. It's, Next year, we'll see about that. This is an actual electric truck. Right now, you can buy it at your local factory. actually makes sense, Cybertruck, because it only exists online. Oh, Cyber, nice, nice. Oof, <laughs> Elon fans sorry, are mad. Sorry. Anyhow, F-150 Lightning is always going to take a look at the exterior. First, then we're going to take a look at the interior. Then we're going to drive it, starting off with the exterior. So we reviewed the Limited not too long ago, and this looks like an F-150. It does. It looks like, which is actually kind of nice, because all the other EV trucks don't look like whatever they are. The Silverado EV doesn't look like Silverado, this looks like an F-150. But it does have, like we were just talking about, it does have the... Exactly, yeah, you have the light EV bar. calling card. Yeah, exactly, yeah, kind of like all the EV trucks. So you have the light bar, you have the fake grill, which I actually, I like it. Kind of like the trapezoids. He likes it more, I'm a little bit conflicted about the front of the truck. I, I like it, I'm just not sure how I feel about this. Uh, what, do you, what would you the, call this? The, pla the opaque, plastic, opaque plastic, daytime running lights. They look a little cheap, but I don't It's I don't not care. a bad looking front. EV-ish wheels covered up fairly well for uh, well, for aerodynamics. Then we got stone gray. Which I don't mind. It's not the most exciting color, but it's, it's not bad it's either. It's totally adequate. I would probably spec a silver. Because that's I would agree like, with you there. That's just like the press car spots, uh, the, the press photos of when they announced it. And well, it's an, it's an F-150. And then of course we have our little lightning badge with the lightning in cool. the T. Cool little badge. Yeah. And this is probably my favorite lightning part. I like the, I like the rear kind of like taillight wrap around. I'm it's, also a fan, it's, it's pretty different. different. It kind of sets it apart. Exactly, with the wee wee Quebec kit. <laughs> Shout out Quebecois. Anyhow, Let's it's an F-150, take a look at the interior. Yeah. It's a little more different in there. Okay, F-150 interior. Well, it's pretty much an F-150, except Shocking. for... The screen, that's really the only difference. We have a, we have a different screen. We have the Mach-E screen, which actually isn't a bad thing in terms of like the interior. The interior of the F-150 is extremely usable. Utility. Yes, it's not the nicest. It's not the nicest, like Sierra Denali will still hands down beat this in terms of its niceness. Yes, this is a Larry, this is not the top trim uh, platinum, but we have been in the limited F-150 recently, which still wasn't as nice and quite frankly, wasn't much different than this. Um, has the classic Ford sounds. <laughs> yeah, but um, it's not a bad interior. It's um, it's not a luxury interior. Like compared to the GMC, there's a yes. stark difference, a stark contrast. Yeah, there's, it's just the Ford interior, the truck F-150 interiors just are never as nice right now as the competitors. They're still very usable. I really like the usability. It has clever features like the kind of like this workspace down here. You have all the connectivity. Uh, you can need, it works really well. Our digital gauge cluster works really well. The screen, if you watched my Mach-E review, I hated this thing. Absolutely hated it. It's still slow. <laughs> it is slow, yeah. But. I got used to it that you just do one, one, one. But you know, you're used to a phone, it's like tick, 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 you're done. So. And beyond the, the utility, my qualm is kind of how it's implemented. Yeah, you don't like the, the It's just the kind of slapped on. It's kind of slapped on. <laughs> it is know? a little slapped on, especially compared to the normal screen in the F-150. Um, but I mean, you, you, you can play lane change and sketch on it. So. Makes up for it. That totally makes up for it. <laughs> no, I, I think like, it's an, it's an F-150. This is totally fine. It is very comfortable. I'm very comfortable in the seats for the first time in an F-150, except for the Raptor. They're not actually, bad. They're I really not bad. like these seats. Big sunroof, plenty of space. There's really not much to complain about, unless you want to like complain about some of the materials. But I mean, I don't like the color of the seats, but that's uh, yeah, subjective. Exactly. Rear space is fantastic. Great. Like, it's a truck. <laughs> you have so much space, heated seats. Uh, by the way, front's heated and ventilated as well. And yeah, like there's nobody will be uncomfortable in here ever. It's great. What's really cool though, the front, the front trunk. I think they call it the max power 
Frank. Max Power? Max Power Frank. Wow. The Max. It's not, not just the half Power Frank, it's the Max Power Frank. Those are action words. Action, those are, the marketing team worked really hard for that one. Um, so not only is it, like I said, really fun when you drive up to somewhere and then you open your frunk and people are very confused where the engine is because they don't realize that this is all electric, but they didn't just put in a frunk, right? They didn't just put up, just put some space in. No, no, no. They really thought this out. So first of all, you can put 400 pounds in there. You can put two golf bags. Two golf bags, <laughs> two full golf bags fit in there because it's 14.1 cubic feet big. You can put 400 pounds of load in there or 400 liters, which doesn't make sense. My, my, yeah, that, that's 800 pounds, I'm pretty sure, but I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty sure they tested that stuff. So it's a drain. You can like make it a cooler, drain it all out. You can wash it out. You have so much space. You have organizers in there. You have four outlets. You have a USB-C. You have a USB slot in there so you can charge power tools, laptops, cameras, whatever, while you're grocery driving. Grocery bag holders. Grocery bag holders. Four grocery bag holders. I've never seen four grocery bag holders. In this economy, that's like $1,000 right there. Right there. Jeez, you're right. <laughs> It's really cool. Like, I love this trunk so much. It takes a little long to open. It just adds a lot of utility to the, to yeah. the vehicle. Yeah, so yeah, it's actually like from the factory and closed space in a truck that's not in the cabin. It's pretty awesome. And you still have a bed. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's very useful. It's kind of, I love this actually. I love this a lot. Shall we go drive? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty. On the F-150 Lightning. You ready? Oh, yep. <laughs> oh man, that sends my brain to the back of my head. <laughs> this is so stupid. <laughs> the only comparison I can give you there is a roller coaster. Oh. Like it gives you that feeling of your guts so, just moving. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a truck shouldn't do that. <laughs> Not a 6,800 pound truck. Oh my God. With us too, that's over 7,000 pounds. Accelerating to 60 in uh, four seconds flat. It has no business doing that. It has no business to this, but I'm oh, all God, for it. This good. is hilarious. We have 580 horsepower and 775 and pound feet feel, of torque. Oh, oh, and you feel out of them. <laughs> sent to all four wheels, direct drive. Sent to my brain is where it's sent. <laughs> this Jeez. is hilarious. I, I love this so much. Oh. It is just, it's just stupid. Like, yes, the Hummer might be faster and I'm absolutely looking forward to driving that. But this is plenty. I just want to point out, this breaks the GC car's like torque rec record by like over 100 pound feet. And I feel it. <laughs> this is just insane. It doesn't need to be that fast, but like it's just so fun. Why not? It is just so fun. And then once you calm down a little, it's just so nice to drive. Yeah. It is so butter smooth. I know we say the same thing every time we drive an electric car, but it's just, you cannot beat an electric drivetrain in terms of smoothness. Yes, it's not always the most exciting, but I mean, it's a truck anyway. I mean, this and now is we got exciting. <laughs> ridiculously quick. Until the Raptor R came out, this was the quickest F-150 ever. And it's just, it, now it's just smooth, comfy. I love this. All right, bud, it's time for a handling test. As my brain just recovers from that yeah. rapid acceleration. I'm gonna take it a little easy. This is 6,800 pounds, but it still feels pretty good. Understeer, sliding out. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we, that rear was coming around in a oh, good way. Was. That was rotating, but very controlled. So this actually handles stupidly well too. Like um, if I may just, you want to brace yourself probably, I'm going to do some direction changes. Just want to clear this thing. So, um, oh, that was stability control stepping in. <laughs> but uh, this actually, uh, because all the weight is down, imagine this to be a really, really heavy go-kart, kind of. <laughs> It moves like a like a mid-size SUV, which I mean, it's not like super athletic. That was my dash cam. But no, this actually, it's kind of fun. It's, 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 it's just hilarious because it shouldn't be able to do all this stuff. It shouldn't. Yet it does. And once we stop, like my brain has to like recalibrate. <laughs> yeah, right, take, take a sip of definitely not Tim Hortons. We're not sponsored, give us money, coffee. This is a Cadillac mug, whatever. Um, that's so we're not- The second fastest car on the, on the, on the channel. <laughs> yeah, true. CTSV. Yeah. Uh, we're not sponsored. That's we're, we're unbiased. Um. <laughs> no, the jokes aside, this actually does make you feel a little bit. I get. I, I feel not. I literally feel nauseous. <laughs> Maybe I'm weak. I don't know. But uh, it's like my brain is like no, it's, trying it's, to figure out what's going on. It's 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 good fun. Good fun. Whew. But talking a little bit more drivetrain. We'll freaking love it. Two motors, by the way, front and mid motor, part of the rear. So um, let's talk a little bit more about the general driving though. Um, suspension is really good. 
Yes. This writes extremely well. This doesn't really write like a truck. Because one of the big things is we have independent rear suspension. Right. We got rid of that solid rear axle of the leaf spring suspension and now we have independent rear suspension and you feel it. Every time I review an F-150, you hear me complain about the kind of the shutter of the rear axle. When you have some bigger bumps, the rear axle starts to move. Completely eliminated. I know there's some benefits to a solid rear axle. Yes. But I think for the purpose of this F-150 Lightning, for filts, and for the weight it has to deal with, it's really nice. It is a well-controlled body. Uh, it doesn't feel... Oh, man. Oh, yes. It's just something... It's kind of like, <laughs> it's my G-sensor in the dash. I'm just constantly, <laughs> da, da, da. Just, it just feels good. But um, this rides extremely well, and it's quiet. It's quiet, very quiet. It handles bumps well, like you were saying. Yeah, even smaller, small, big, everything. It handles it well. Direction changes, it handles well. It's just extremely well set up. It's by far the most refined F-150 you can step in. And... It's just, I really like driving this. It I'm does like, everything that you need it to do while driving and then some. We got so caught up in driving this thing that I forgot that we need to switch seats. There I you go. Yeah, See? Let's, let's get you in the driver's seat here <laughs> real quick. He's hogging the steering wheel. It <laughs> was mine. All right. Back on the road. My turn. Oh, God. My turn. Oh, oh God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It just feels good. Like, I, I mean, it feels kind of good for your spine too because you get just like straightened up against the seat so much. It's just, it's so unnecessary, but so necessary at the same time. That's oh, the only way I can explain it. I love it. Like, the funny thing is, now that I can charge it at home because I installed that charger like a block away from me, my perspective on EVs has changed so much. Like before that, I always appreciated them for what they are. Now EVs are literally the easiest for me. I can charge at work, I can charge at home. And it's so, like I'm about, 600 kilometers deep into this truck and I think I paid $15 so far. That's less than 100 kilometers in the gas truck. It's pretty awesome. It's it's just great. And just quickly because I'm already starting to talk about stuff that I wanted to talk about in the final thoughts. Uh, in terms of tech, you got like, I'm a little disappointed. Like this has Blue Cruise and my continued confusion with Blue Cruise keeps on confusing me because it has Blue Cruise. Everything is set up for Blue Cruise. but. I am on Blue Cruise Highways, but it never activates, which is a thing. I've had four Fords, it never worked. I've got to work in the Navigator once. I've been through all the forums, I double checked, triple checked, quadruple checked, all their options, it just doesn't work. I don't know why. And the Lane Keep Assist as is, it does do for you like all the time, always wants to put me like into the lane to the right. Like it's always like right on the line. And like, buddy, I'm driving a truck. Like <laughs> you can't put me all the way over. So, man, eh, it needs a little more refinement. Otherwise, adaptive cruise control, emergency braking. You got the necessary stuff sorted out. I was bracing there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so the light, the big thing. Everybody complains, oh, this can tow. This can tow. It can tow. So, yes, it can technically can tow 10,000 pounds, which is um, just like 1,300 pounds less than the uh, limited. So 10,000 pounds is really good. It can tow those maybe like 150 kilometers. I was gonna say, the question is, how much does your range drop? <laughs> so yes, it is a significant impact, but there is an amazing use case for this, I think, for the Lightning, because it fulfills a purpose that no other truck on the market today fulfills. What's that, Eric? So there's twofold, this is kind of twofold. First of all, the I just wanna have a truck because I like space and it's a great commuter. If you live, somewhere remotely close to a city, this is gonna be amazing. This is fast, this is capable, this is quiet, refined, and it is just... Stupid fun. It's stupid fun and it's practical. Like you have a front, you don't need to buy anything to like you don't need cover a up your cover, yeah. you, need, you don't need tonneau cover, yeah. you have plenty of space, you have all the connectivity, all that stuff right here. And then let's say you're a contractor, you do something, I don't know, in the city or mostly around the city, and you need to load a lot of stuff. You need to haul power tools or something like that. Even you, freak, you go into the construction side, you have a 9.6 kilowatt hour generator, essentially that this Very truck true. is. So there's just a you lot of- You can charge your batteries, things. whatever you need. Yeah. You can charge your batteries, you can run lights off your truck. The issue for me is if, I, if I'm a contractor and I'm hauling lumber in the back, I'm gonna want to gun this thing at every opportunity. <laughs> you just gonna lose all your lumber. lumber. Final destination six over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true, yeah, you just, you just gotta get used to it. Just the first thousand just, just kilometers, oh, you just do this all the time. <laughs> oh. 
Like, I would just want to do that at every opportunity. <laughs> oh, me too. Me too. <laughs> on the... No, honestly, I think this is an amazing vehicle. It has few limitations, that is true. But what, if you use it for what it's really made for, hauling stuff, not towing, but hauling. If your sole purpose smart. for a vehicle is towing, maybe it's not the one for you. Yes, That's exactly. But for everything else, this is probably the truck. You could daily you. drive this, no problem. Uh, Range-wise, on the highway, which is the worst you can get for an EV truck, I get about 425 kilometers range with the heat on. Um, so if you do city driving, you can do 500 pretty easily. Um, it's, it's plenty of range. Charging takes a long time because with 131 kilowatt hour battery. An hour. For fast charging, I charge overnight, right? So that t tonight I charge it for like 13 hours from 30 to 100. Right. But I mean, I'm sleeping, so whatever. <laughs> so, and like I said, it's, it's dirt cheap for me. And that's where also I think the price is actually fairly reasonable. So what's the price here? Uh, this is uh, what, $108,355, I believe. I messed you up on that because I kept saying one eight actually. So it's $111,350. 111, $111,350, which is, this is the mid trim. So if you go for the platinum, you get one twenty five. Okay, yeah, that's a little more expensive. The Hybrid Limited, we tested the top trim, F-150, non-Raptor, non-Lightning, was one one oh eight. <sighs> I'm taking this. It's very hard to pick that over this. This is more refined. This is more capable except towing yes and like it's just so stupid to get and the money like even if you pay 15 grand more for this over an, an equivalent gas f-150 in no time i did the math it takes you like eighty thousand, maybe a hundred thousand kilometers and you break even and that's especially interesting if you if this is a fleet vehicle for a company right for contractors you rack up a hundred grand so quickly hundred thousand kilometers yeah and after that you make bank with the ev savings so I'd go as far as to say, if towing is not your main priority, I don't see any reason why you'd pick the hybrid over this, right? No, I agree. And heck, I would love this. I love driving trucks. They're very comfortable. They're very easy. I'm not even a truck guy, and I would, I would, I would drive this. And this no takes problem. away the one, purpose, the one drawback they had, which is fuel economy. This is For more sure. efficient than a Prius. <laughs> it should not, and it's faster than a base Cayman, probably. This like, would beat a lot of sports cars out there. This would beat a lot of sports cars. And um, I think, to come to a conclusion here, so first of all, I love this car. I think it's truck. It's totally worth the money. And I think this is probably the most important car since the Tesla Model You think it's truck of the year? Sorry? You think it's truck of the year? I think it's maybe even vehicle slash car of the year for me. We'll see. At the Hummer, end of the Hummer's year. up there probably. At the, we'll see. At the end of the year, we're going to do our little GC Cars Awards and we'll see if this is the car of the year. But I think from a, from an impact on the industry, this is probably the most important. The Tesla Model S started the whole EV stuff uh, with help from VW. Thanks for Dieselgate. Um, but this is, this is the truck that can convince probably 90% of the doubters of the people that don't want EVs and don't like EVs that which I know a lot of in, them right and you show them this you show them the front you show them the range so show them the power the smoothness and I think this will have huge impact and I see a lot of them around yeah even with all the issues with supply this I think people will look back at this vehicle in 10 20 years and this will be one of the turning points. this is when America and North America Accept EVs, and you can't even say price is a, a determining factor because so many pickup trucks are over a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, like it it's feels standard. like you, you, you take like two options and you have a hundred grand. So, so this is I love this thing. Ford did an absolutely amazing job. It's not flawless, but very few things out there are. If they would re refine their interior, which is what they need to do, right? Yeah, if they would refine this interior. Thing. You would have an absolute faultless vehicle. Yeah, pretty much. That's, that's, that's a good conclusion right there. Yep. And I think with that, we're going to thank everyone for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. We make videos every single week. So if you guys like this one, feel free to tune in. We'd love to have you back. Exactly. And if you like the video, like and subscribe. Thanks so much and goodbye. There's so much traffic. Where's everyone yeah, going? I'm nauseous there for a second. Yeah? Holy. Damn. <laughs> gives me like that, that roller coaster feeling like, holy, I'm dizzy. I feel it in my brain now. Yeah, I feel right? it. Right? Oh, I, I feel, feel nauseous. Like, I feel like a little bit like... I'm discombobulated. <laughs>